All right, so it's been exactly five years since I started my journey in the cloud. And knowing everything I know now, I do things very differently. AI has completely transformed the way we learn. The entire learning timeline from zero to mastery is becoming more and more compressed. In fact, if you're not using tools like ChatGPT every time you study, you're already falling behind. And so in this video, I'll be walking you through how exactly to learn AWS in 2026, the roadmap I follow, and what resources I use if I were to start from zero. By the way, make sure you watch until the end because I'll be announcing a live training program starting January 10th where I'll be personally teaching you AWS. The link to register is in the description below. Okay, let's get into it. So first of all, what's actually changed since the last five years? Well, let me start off by telling you my story. My cloud learning journey began at the end of 2020, where I achieved four AWS certifications in five months. In 2021, I landed my job at AWS as a solutions architect. And by 2023, I left AWS to make YouTube videos and mentor students full time. Fast forward to this year, I officially launched my learning platform Zero to Cloud, where I help beginners learn AWS. But here's the thing, if I was starting over today, I wouldn't follow the same path, not even close. I spent over 500 hours studying for AWS certifications. I would watch hours of video lessons, write notes, and then read them over and over again. Because at the time, that's what everyone was doing. Every blog post and every YouTube video out there was telling me that if I want to learn AWS and get hired, I had to study for certifications. It was the only way. However, this approach is completely off, especially for 2026. AWS is a cloud platform. It's not a dictionary, it's not a bunch of theoretical concepts. And so the best way to learn it is by building hands-on projects not by memorizing service definitions or by watching someone else click through the console. Employers these days also care more about your projects than the certifications you have on your resume because they also know that certifications at the end of the day are just multiple choice quizzes. And so here are the steps I'd follow to master AWS. First, I'd learn the theory. Next, I'd build real world projects. After that, I'll fill my knowledge gaps through practice. And finally, I document and showcase my work. Step number five is pretty much repeating the cycle over and over again. And these set of steps make up the overarching theme for my 2026 cloud learning roadmap. Learn, build, practice, document, repeat. Now, with the rise of useful AI tools like ChatGPT and Claude, it's never been easier to speed through these steps. You can build real knowledge and confidence in a matter of weeks. And so with all that being said, let's get into the roadmap. The first step is to learn the theory. Start by getting a basic knowledge of cloud and AWS. There's a whole bunch of free videos on YouTube and online lectures you can check out. My recommendation is to use AWS Skill Builder, which is a free learning platform created by AWS themselves. Now, instead of writing notes to remember everything, use something like ChatGPT as your personal AWS tutor and accountability coach. Every time you don't understand a concept clearly, you can ask it to explain it to you in simple terms. For example, if you want to know the difference between Amazon EC2 and AWS Lambda, you can just ask it for a comparison table of the two. You can also use AI to break down complex topics, give you analogies, and even create practice quizzes to assess your knowledge. Learners who can figure out how to properly use AI as their study companion are going to surpass everyone else. Because at the end of the day, our time to learn is limited. Learning faster will give us more time to go deeper on certain concepts and actually apply them. Companies want what they call T-shaped people. If you haven't heard of this term before, you can think of it like this. The horizontal part of the T is broad cloud knowledge, and the vertical part is a deep expertise in one specific area. For example, security, AI infrastructure, or analytics. That's why you should understand the core cloud concepts and AWS services as soon as you can so that you can start going deeper. And don't worry about over relying on AI tools. The future of tech careers will be heavily AI driven. When I worked at AWS, we'd spend hours on meetings answering basic questions from our clients. Nowadays, solutions architects and even clients themselves are encouraged to use AI tools like Amazon Q to resolve simple queries. Knowing how to prompt AI effectively is also a skill in itself. So I'd highly encourage you to use generative AI to fast track your learning. But overall, my view from an employment perspective is that cloud certifications are pretty useless these days. A few years ago, you could land a cloud job simply by having two to three certifications. But if you're new to AWS, I'd still use certifications as a way to map out a structured learning pathway. Certifications like the AWS Cloud Practitioner and Solutions Arctic Associate help you understand the fundamentals. You don't necessarily have to sit the exam to show that you have the knowledge. So if you have the money for it, I'd recommend giving the exams a shot. But if you don't have the budget to get certified, you can still learn the content that the certifications cover for free using something like AWS Skill Builder. The key is to understand the basics and then move on to the stage where you're actually building. 
because the actual badge matters a lot less compared to previous years. Okay, now you might be wondering, if certifications are becoming less important, what matters more now? Which brings us to step number two, which is to build real projects. Every hiring manager I've spoke to recently has shared with me their struggle of finding strong candidates. Not candidates with five cloud certifications, but candidates who have real hands-on experience. Now, hands-on experience doesn't have to mean previous internships or jobs. It's any relevant experience where you've built real-world projects in the cloud. For example, a web app using AWS Amplify or an AI automation tool using Amazon SageMaker. When you build projects, you start to naturally understand how AWS services connect. You'll also begin to build an intuition on which set of services to use in which scenario, which is something that no amount of memorizing can teach you. Now, if you're not too sure what projects to build or you want step-by-step -step guidance, I'd highly recommend checking out my learning platform, Zero to Cloud. I have a whole bunch of project guidebooks ranging from beginner to advanced. I also have role-specific projects to help you become a solutions architect, cloud support engineer, cloud security engineer, and more. If you get stuck at any step, each of my project courses also comes with a dedicated Slack community where it will help you troubleshoot and debug all the way until you've successfully built everything. In my opinion, my projects on Zero to Cloud are the best in the market because they cover a wide range of real world scenarios that will help you build a strong foundation. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. Okay, at this point, I have to warn you about something. Learning cloud isn't going to feel like a straight path. Just like with anything new, some days you're going to feel unmotivated. It's also impossible to master every single concept. And that's completely fine because step number three is about identifying your knowledge gaps and filling them in through practice. Once you've learned the fundamentals of cloud and built a few projects, you're going to realize that there's certain topics that you need to dive deeper in. For example, when learning cloud, you'll come across containers, Docker, security, databases, and so many other concepts. You might also want to learn a programming language like Python. Once you fill in those gaps, that's when your knowledge of the cloud will get to the next level. You'll no longer just be able to build applications within AWS. You'll understand how everything fits in together. And so what I recommend doing is to continually upskill. Make sure you have the mindset of someone who's curious and eager to learn. If you come across a topic you're not too sure about, write it down and make sure you cover it later on. It could even be something simple like signing up for a Docker account and trying out a few tutorials. Okay, step number four is something that learners often overlook and that is to document and show your work. Once you've built your projects, the next step is to make your work visible. Start by documenting everything on GitHub, LinkedIn, or Medium. These platforms are great for showcasing what you've built, explaining your thought process, and reflecting on what you've learned. Building a personal brand can also open a lot of opportunities, from job offers to freelance work and collaborations. And that's because when people see you share your cloud journey online, it builds trust and familiarity. Over time, you'll naturally start attracting recruiters, hiring managers, and others who are interested in working with you. For example, even when I was still working at AWS, I pretty much consistently posted on LinkedIn every single month. And that led to my job opportunity with Google Cloud, which by the way, I ended up turning down to do YouTube full time. Now, if you're serious about starting starting your cloud journey, I have an exciting announcement to make. I've just launched Zero to Cloud Accelerator, which is a 90-day live training program for you to learn AWS from scratch. It starts on January 10, 2026, and I'll be personally teaching 100 students. You'll learn cloud, build real-world projects, and join a community of like-minded learners. I'll also show you how to optimize your resume and build your cloud portfolio. If you'd like more info about the program, I've left a link to it in the description below. There's about 50 spots remaining, so if you're interested in joining, make sure to sign up early. Okay, let's now talk about what roles in the cloud are currently in demand, and hopefully that will give you some motivation to learn AWS. The roles with the fastest growth at the moment are cloud security engineers, cloud AI engineers, and specialized solutions architects. These roles come with strong pay incentives, with salaries well above other tech roles. And before we wrap up, let me address one big mistake cloud learners make. I see so many people trying to learn AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud all at the same time. That's like trying to learn French, German, and Spanish simultaneously. You'll likely end up with a surface level knowledge of all three instead of a deep knowledge in one. And so my advice is to master one cloud first. Once you get really good at AWS, for example, it becomes much easier to pick up the knowledge of other clouds because the fundamental concepts are all the same. And there you have it, how I would learn AWS cloud in 2026 if I were to start over. If you're serious about learning cloud and building projects, make sure you check out my courses on Zero to Cloud to get started. Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. Please leave a comment down below if you're learning cloud this year and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye for now.